Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film my reviews of the two books that we picked for the Book Naturalist Book Club in March. Those two books were Spineless by Julie Burwald and Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. And uh, these two books I think fit very nicely in the month of March, which is also Women's History Month, because these two women authors are scientists and um, not just scientists, but science communicators. They write about sciences for a living. And I think that's a wonderful thing to celebrate in the month that is for women's history. So in Spineless, The Science of Jellyfish and the Art of Growing a Backbone by Julie Burwald, um, where we learn about the invertebrate species jellyfish. And um, it's also not just a scientific exploration of a particular class of animals, but it's also an exploration of Julie Burwald's life. Um, and I really enjoyed the mixture of memoir and science writing that's in this book. I know some people struggled with the memoir aspect of it. They felt it was sort of shoved in here, but I liked the little bits and bobs that she interjects in the story of the jellyfish. So who is Julie Burwald? She is uh, a lady who studied ocean science at university. And then after she completed her degrees, she got married and moved with her husband to Texas and had some children and began writing textbooks, science textbooks. And somewhere along the way, after her children have grown up in out of the baby stage, basically, um, she looks around at her life and realizes that she misses the science part. <laughs> Um, that writing textbooks is not fulfilling um, or exciting and that she really misses that exploration part of what she was studying um, when she studied ocean sciences. And in amongst that sort of slow realization that her life is missing something, um, not that she doesn't love her family and her children, but there's just some aspect of it that isn't quite working for her, she learns something about jellyfish and realizes that she's fascinated by jellyfish. Um, and so then it begins an exploration for her where she travels around the world and speaks to scientific researchers who are studying jellyfish across the world. And the, the premise that she's chasing or the question that she's chasing is, have humans so impacted the ocean um, that jellyfish are increasing in population size and that jellyfish are going to be the winners of the environmental degradation that has happened to oceans due to human human actions. Um, so she, as I said, travels around the world, all different parts of the world, and she gets a chance to, you know, get in the water with jellyfish. She gets a chance to talk to people who are fishing for jellyfish, people who are studying jellyfish, all different aspects of different ways that you can look at jellyfish. And it was fascinating. I didn't know very much about jellyfish beyond the, the basics of the species. Julie Burwald does an excellent job of explaining um, the science behind jellyfish in a way that I found uh, really readable. It is, you know, in depth and does talk a bit about, you know, reproduction and different things that you might find a little obtuse, but I, I thought she does a nice job of explaining it for the lay person. Um, and in, interspersed amongst these different interactions that she has with researchers and fishermen and things that she's learning about jellyfish, she tells us her life story, how she got interested in ocean sciences, her experiences um, in school, what it's like to be a woman in the sciences, um, her interactions with these different people who are researching uh, jellyfish and their reactions to her as a journalist, uh, I thought was really interesting. Um, different things about, uh, about wh what climate change is doing to the ocean um, and how jellyfish are impacting uh, not only um, the marine environment, but the human environment because when the population numbers of jellyfish go up, it has a, quite an impact on humans and human enterprise. So I found all of that really, really fascinating, told in a really wonderful tone of voice. I very much appreciated Julie Burwald's um, approach to this novel as a working mother. Um, as a working mother myself in the sciences, I could really relate to a lot of the things she's talking about. You know, how you are focused on your family, especially when your kids are young, but you also have this drive to know why things are the way they are in the natural world. 
um, and that you don't want to shortchange your family life, but you also don't want to give up that part of you that's focused on your passion. Um, and I'm sure other people feel the same way in other uh, in other industries, um, but it's really, I thought, a really nice exploration of the push-pull between home and passion for your work that uh, women oftentimes feel. So I really, really love this book. I wanna read you just a short section as I always do so that you can get an idea of the writing style. Jellyfish have become a better late than never vehicle for me to explore the threats to the ocean's future. They're a way to start a conversation about things that can seem boring and abstract, acidification, warming, overfishing, and coastal development but that are changing our oceans in fundamental ways. On the train, Lucas had pointed out that whether jellyfish numbers were on the rise globally was the wrong question. As misguided as viewing the diverse ecosystems on an entire continent, the wooded mountaintops, the alpine rivers, the sweeping prairies, the arid deserts, the rich estuaries, the rocky chaparral as a single biome. Like any particular neighborhood, each ecosystem in the ocean has its own unique characteristics with distinctive vulnerabilities, threats, and resiliencies. Understanding whether jellyfish will flourish or fail requires attention to those differences and a strong understanding of the ways they interact with other ecosystems. The ocean is a vast and complicated place and we barely understand how our actions on land affect it. Right on, right on Julie Burwald. I am all on board for that. So if um, science writing and memoir mixture together is your jam, I would highly recommend you pick up Spineless. And then the second book that we picked for the month, of, the month of March was Why Fish Don't Exist, A Story of Lost Love and the Hidden Order of Life by Lulu Miller. Now, Lulu Miller is an NPR reporter. She's the co-host of Radio Lab and the co-founder of Invisibilia. So she is a science communicator and that is her job. Um, and that is why I found it really strange that when I first started reading this book, like the first half of this book, I'm like, I don't like her writing style. <laughs> like I could not get into this book at first at all. Like I found it really difficult to connect with the way this story is told. And this again is another um, deep dive into a specific topic interspersed with memoir from the author. And so the specific topic in this book is the classification of species as was um, as was conducted by this one particular guy called David Starr Jordan. He was a taxonomist um, and he actually named like over a thousand fish, like maybe like 13 or 1500 fish. He himself was involved with the naming of those fish. And, you know, at a certain point in history, naturalists and scientists were like super focused on putting a name, naming, finding out all the different species and putting a name to them. And David Starr Jordan was super fascinated with that. Um, and so Lulu Miller, set, Lulu Miller sets out to tell David Starr Jordan's story because she's interested in how he is like sort of forcing order on the universe by classifying and naming all of these different creatures. And she has this need as well to like force her world into order because she suffers from depression and suicidal thoughts. Um, and she feels like if she can unlock the secret of how David Starr Jordan, who, who encountered many, many setbacks, like serious personal and professional setbacks in his life and how he kept going and kept his drive to complete the tasks that he had set himself. And Lulu Miller wants to know how he did that and what are his insights about how you keep, continue to keep going when faced with um, serious adversity. Um, and But her writing style just didn't, just didn't connect with me. She writes in these sort of short, choppy phrases that aren't even complete sentences, which is something that's a particular bugabear for me. I just, sometimes I really just dislike that. Um, and it really pulled me out of the reading experience at the beginning of the story. The other thing that bothered me was the first half of this book is really focused on David Starr Jordan. And he's not a particularly nice person. Um, turns out David Starr Jordan is so focused on his idea of what the hierarchy is in the tree of life that he has decided that some humans are higher up on the hierarchy than others. Yes, in fact, David Starr Jordan is a eugenicist and he is very passionate about that. So 
he is not a likable person, <laughs> which I don't need my characters to be likable, especially real life ones. Um, but it's hard to like see Lulu Miller like trying to like sort of glorify this man, but she's questioning it too. So like stick with it because I will tell you that the second half of this book, and it's not a long book, it's only like 200 pages. The second half of this book, I was in love. I was in love with this book because Lulu Miller finds her stride in what she's talking about. And what she's talking about really is that these hierarchies don't exist. Like they are man-made constructions. They don't work in the natural world with other species and they don't work with our own species. And that, hence the title, why fish don't exist. Because fish are not a category. <laughs> in the tree of life, there is no such thing as what we consider fish. Um, some fish are very closely related to humans. Some fish are not. Um, so fish are a convenient category based on how they look with scales and fins, um, but are not true to their internal structure and don't really tell us how these animals that live in the ocean sort of, uh, or live in water, um, shouldn't say ocean because it's also freshwater, th these animals that live in the water, how they developed and evolved over time. And fish is not a category that gets us there. Um, so once Lulu Miller starts addressing that and also at the same ta time talking about why eugenicists got it wrong, because the hierarchy also does not exist in the human species, I was totally on board with it. And you can see that because my tabs um, are all in the last half of the book. Um, and so I fell in love hard with this book at the second half. So I would say to you, if you start this book and you're really struggling with it and you think, mm, I don't really want to read 200 pages about this dude, stick with it just a little ways past the halfway point. I think you will find the merit in this book. Um, and so I will just read you a little bit here at the end so you can get a taste of what I'm talking about. And then I consider the fish, the fact that fish don't exist. I picture a silvery fish dissolving in my hand. If fish don't exist, what else don't we know about our world? What other truths are waiting behind the lines we draw over nature? What other categories are about to cave in? Could clouds be animate? Who knows? On Neptune, it rains diamonds. It really does. Scientists figured that out just a few years ago. The longer we examine our world, the stranger it proves to be. Perhaps there will be a mother waiting inside a person deemed unfit. Perhaps there will be a medicine inside a weed. Salvation inside the kind of person you had discounted. There is some wisdom at the end of this book that I felt deep in my soul. Um, and I just put this book down and sort of was like, it it brought me optimism again in a world that lately I have felt very cynical about. And I, it was really nice to feel like there's still wonder left in the world. There's still things waiting to be discovered in the world. Um, and just because we get it wrong sometimes doesn't mean we should throw everything else away. Like there's still good to be found and we need to keep looking for that good. Um, and I just love the message that Lulu Miller is putting out there with this book. And I would be remiss if I did not uh, mention the illustrations in uh, Why Fish Don't Exist because they are fabulous. They are these... Um, the illustrations in this book were made using a direct engraving technique called scratch board, which originated in the 19th century. A white clay hardboard is coated with black India ink and any abrasive can be used to scratch away the black. In this case, the artist primarily used a sewing needle. And the illustrator um, for this book was Kate Samworth. And they, they're just fabulous. I mean, the, the book is worth picking up simply for the illustrations alone. I just thought they were absolutely 100% gorgeous. Um, really, really lovely. I would love to have these framed actually on the wall. If I didn't want to, if I didn't want to keep this book um, forever, I would cut these out and frame them. But this one is my favorite. I just, there's so much detail in these illustrations. They're just wonderful. So, um, and the cover too, like that gold foil fish wonderful. So yeah, another win for me with these two books um, for the Book Naturalist Book Club. I hope that if you haven't ha yet had a chance to try these two books, you will give them a go. I think they're really, really wonderful reads and um, I can't 
encourage you or recommend them highly enough. So in April, we will be doing another Author Spotlight Month, and this month we will be focused on Jennifer Ackerman, who writes a lot about birds. Um, I had already read this author's book, The Genius of Birds, um, and very much enjoyed it. And this time I will be reading Birds by the Shore. I may also pick up and reread Genius of Birds. I just don't know what kind of time I'm gonna have, um, but I would highly recommend that you try it because Jennifer Ackerman is an excellent, excellent artist. Um, so yeah, uh, Jennifer Ackerman, Author Spotlight for the month of April.